Hello again, my name is Robert Anderson, and this time I'll be showing you how to create a campaign from scratch. As I showed you before in other recordings, uh, there are pre-created campaigns with uh, suggested content or format to your emails uh, for different verticals. That's a good place to start if you don't really feel comfortable with starting from scratch. Um, and it's a good place to actually learn the campaign builder as well to see how it can be used. That being said, the goal here is to build something from scratch, uh, something new I'm following up on. The campaign is very simply automation. It's the most powerful part of the software, in my opinion, and it really brings a lot of life to uh, your list in a way. So without that, with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and go to campaigns. There's processes that I want to automate. You, the first thing you see here is the campaigns that have already been created with various metrics. You can click on view and edit to actually enter that campaign. For now, I'll click on explore campaigns. In addition to the strategy guide, which I showed before, access from the dashboard, this one here, you can install given other campaigns here to use as well. They offer different solutions people have insight into. Instead of that, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and click build your own from scratch. Install, and it says added to list. So you can see I'm going into the campaign builder. So you'll see a grid. Let's name this campaign is test uh, coaching. Very creative. So here, um, it, you see the grid, and we're plotting out our process onto this grid. How do so? The very first question you have to ask yourself is, okay, what is my process, right? Let's say that in this example, um, I'm going to direct traffic from my website and social media to a landing page. Let's say I have an event coming up, and I want to promote it. So regardless of what online source they come through, they'll get to this landing page and opt in there. So as I've clearly described. That's a goal. Any of these goals are effectively entry points uh, to this campaign. So if I bring out the landing page, let's just say this is event, um, April event landing page. So I have a landing page and I like starting out from bird's eye view and working out, right? So what happens after the landing page? What do I want to happen when someone opts in? Well, this is for an event, right? So let's say that I want automation. When someone opts in, I have a sequence. Inside of the sequence, we'll double click to actually add the automation we want. So after someone submits this page, boom, I want you to get whatever I put in this box. But what's the point of this automation? The point of this automation is to um, fill out uh, some additional information, let's say. Uh, but for now, we're good to just deliver that. And let's say at the very end, we'll just have two labels, a tag that we've applied to the record at the event. You either attended, you actually showed up, or you, whoops, sorry, I can right click and duplicate this. And this would be no show, right? Those are the two outcomes of this event. You either showed up or you no showed. And now that you've registered, I can double click on this one to create the tag for that. So I'll just do attended, create. You can choose a category, it's just for organizing your tags. For now, I'll just do behavior. They, they behaved in this way, they attended. And then for this one, I did no show. And then create a new tag, behavior, apply that category, and save. So either attended or no showed, and this is just uh, event reminders. Anything in this sequence, is reminding you of the actual event. And let's say, just bring out a little note at the very bottom. This is really handy for using and it is HTML friendly, so like bold, um, about this campaign. I'll, obvious, I'll often leave this with customers just so that they kind of know when they're training people or when they're going back. Um, this is for the April 25th Bonanza Fest Gala, super awesome sounding, right? Cool. And that's all we're good for, right? So event reminders. If I double click in here, okay, when you sign in, how many reminders am I sending you and when am I sending them to you? It's March 27th, it's March 28th, it's March 29th, whatever date it happens to be. And when do I want to send their first reminder, right? So the very first email that I want to go out will go out immediately saying, as soon as you submit that form, confirmation, right? I want a confirmation email to go out as soon as they submit that. 
saying thanks for signing up. We're looking forward to seeing you. It's hosted here. We'll send you more information to prepare. And let's say that two weeks before the event, I said April 25th. So let's say a date timer. So the, the difference is here. Delay, always wait a certain amount of time. So if this was just a, a PDF on your website, it just maybe wait three days before you try again or 10 days or something like that, a week, a month, and so on. It's always standard for everyone. But in this case, it's a date event, right? It's on a certain date. If people are here before a certain date, I'm sending a two-week reminder, hyping them up perhaps, because just so that they stay interested. A field timer is something like a birthday. It's very variable based on the contact. Everybody's birthday is different, right? So based on this individual's birthday, send this happy birthday email. That's where field timers come in. This can also be used for anniversaries and other custom fields like their appointment time. So if this was a doctor's appointment, everybody's appointments at a different time, send it based on their appointment. In this case, everyone's going to the same event on the same date. So I used a date timer and if I can double click on it, I can configure it to say this is going on on April 11th. I'll use their time zone, they might be flying out from around the world. And let's just send it at 10, 15 a.m. on their time zone. Cool. And let's say I have another email going out. So this is just a reminder, two week reminder. And let's just say you have one three days before. I can either duplicate the timer and edit it or drag out a new one. And the goal here is this is on April 22nd. At, let's say 2.45 on their time zone, PM. Save. And then last reminder, it's see you in three days. I've already shown the email builder, so I'm not gonna click into these. I do wanna show you one feature actually, and and actually I'll show it. See this real little draft icon? All that means is, and you'll see the gray color, this is currently being edited. It's not ready to go yet. When I click on this draft button, it goes to ready, and you'll see the colors change to this light grayed out green uh, when things are marked as ready. Eventually, I'll hit this publish button, and I'll show you what happens then when we get there. So um, I didn't go over any other features, but apply remove tag might be valuable here. I'm just going to drag this out and just kind of splice it in. You'll see the label highlight, and I kind of added it. Tag them as interested in April 2018 event. Just a general tag that always stays with them, right? Uh, April 2018 event, interested, right? And then attended or no-show eventually. So you'll tag them so you can search for them, maybe send them an extra email blast if you need to. Um, other things, you can assign them an owner uh, with who's in charge of them, automatically create an appointment for, for the individual or everyone, um, create an opportunity for your sales process like a deal, uh, send them a text message through a third party app or send them to a, another area, and then create a task. I need to call them at this point in time. Uh, those are common things you see and we can dive into more of that functionality later. Uh, you do have a pretty uh, good uh, access to this functionality still in our uh, help center as well if you need more insight into each of these. Um, that about covers it. So let me get out of this. I marked it as ready and let's say that we're good to go um, here. Actually, one thing I wanna show you, the, the landing page itself. Uh, the landing page builder is, is our newest builder. You have lots and lots of templates to select from, but for now I'll, I'll probably select the pre-made one we've made. Hopefully it bears with me here. So you see it load, and as I mentioned, I did event. So I can just go ahead and filter, or I can just scroll down. One thing I do, I use Control F on my keyboard and maybe find event, speaker event, right? It found that for me, there's another one somewhere. Event meetup page, now let's just do speaker event. I can preview this landing page to start with a very, with a good way to go here. I want to use this template. And again, just to remind you, you can build entirely from scratch. It's my experience that, that can be a little bit annoying sometimes just because I find myself asking, ah, oh, do I want this here or there? It's kind of good to go with something at least the first few times that it's been proven or just has a pretty layout and then just edit the content and colors and images yourself. So once we're here, I just want to show you a couple things. I can click on anything to edit it. This is currently my business logo. If I wanted to use this to something else, I could click on replace image to be uh, pick from an image gallery, for example. Uh, for example, we're open, and you'll see oh, it's a different color here. Sorry about that. Well, regardless of the actual image we're using, uh, we would upload our logo, for example. Enter to search. 
And let's just use this one. Okay, you'd see the image show up here. I'm having issues with just my current uh, laptop setting right now, but you can edit your social media URLs, just the links. Where does the button lead to when it goes? Color, styling, spacing, alignment. You can go insane with all of this. Color, I definitely recommend matching your branding. If you click add color, you can actually use the different hex codes from your branding if you have that. Um, for now, I'll just leave that white, that's fine. Get ready for the event. So instead of speaker con, it'd be just April Bonanza Best Gala, I think I called it. That's the, the risk of naming it, whatever. You can click on these images to change them out for your own speakers that are speaking. Um, change out the text. As you see, when I click on an element, I get very easy access on the right to actually interface with that element, so edit it. And that being said, just see this update. When you're all done with your actual layouts, I can go to next step. Okay, when they submit this page, where am I sending them to? You might send them to somewhere like Eventbrite to actually purchase a ticket, or it might just be good enough to know they're registered and they'll pay on site or it's just a free event, whatever. Design a thank you page is internal. I'm just gonna go with that. And it's very straightforward. Uh, similar to the other builder, when I click on things, I can edit them on the right. What do they see when they sign up for the event? So let's say that this is good. I don't need to edit anymore. Now I need to launch this. There are some advanced features you can see here. Custom domains is how do I make, instead of this Infusionsoft jumbled address, have my own domain on that. That's what this is. Sharing on Facebook, embedding this on your website. I won't get too crazy here. They're advanced things, and we have other resources to go over them. For now, I'm going to go live. So now that I've published this, I'm going to go ahead and copy this link just to have it handy. Uh, just rule of thumb, I just kind of like having it out on the main grid. I don't like having to click in the forms just to get the hosted URL for it. Uh, that's not a problem if you're hosting it on your web own website. But just like I brought out this note, just a little time-saving hack I've used. I just you know, landing page, April event, landing page URL. And that's just there, so you can copy and paste it in everything. So now that everything's this light green color, except the emails, which is fine, I'm good to go. So I'm going to click Publish. You'll notice some icons here when this is, this is scanning your campaign for accuracy. You'll see this little heads up yellow icon saying, hey, there's four things not ready. You'll see that when I click here, these four icons are gray. That's what that means. It's not ready, meaning when I publish, this won't actually be live, the emails. Let's say I'm fine with that, that I did three emails or something, that I'm fine with the current version. All green check marks here. Publish. And you'll see metrics here. I'm actually going to dive into this in a separate recording, but that's pretty much all you need to worry about when it comes to your campaign builder. And uh, feel free to ask any questions to our support team for any additional help.